Hi, welcome to another video. I have a cursed plastic teapot in the background. <laughs> that might have got me for Christmas, I love it. Um, and we're here to do book couple deal. January TBR, but welcome. We're playing a new game today. Come a bit closer. I feel like you're a bit far away. Um, we're playing um, Book Up Blue Deal, which if you didn't, if you're not familiar, is based on um, Monopoly Deal, which is a Monopoly card game. It's a Monopoly card game. Um, basically, it's pretty similar to Monopoly in that a lot of the same components exist. Um, but really, the goal is to collect pro uh, sets of properties um, rather than like knock everyone else off the board. It's a pretty fast game. It takes about 15 minutes. So it's like the speedy version of Monopoly. Um, and basically, your goal when playing it normally is to collect three, be the first to collect three properties. Obviously, I'm just playing with myself, so that's not going to happen. But um, what I've done is I've assigned prompts to every property. Every color has a category because there are wild cards in the deck for different colors to help you make a set. There's also different action cards that can influence how play goes. Um, and so I've got ideas for those. Um... And essentially, I'm going to go to one set. So instead of having a set number of, t of cards I draw every month from the deck, we go until I get a set. And whatever happens, happens in that. Um, so today is going to be our first draw from the Monopoly Deal deck. I did take out some of the cards. If you want to play your own Monopoly Deal, um, I will have graphics below explaining my prompts for every property. But you could adjust them however you wanted. Um, the cards that I took out are the houses and hotels, the debt collector cards, um, but if you have any ideas for how you would like to see the debt collector card used, let me know. Um, I took out hotels and houses, and I took out the just say no cards and the double the rent cards, but they might come into play as, like, challenges later um, if I fail. Um, also, the it's your birthday cards came out. Uh, but all of those might go back in later. We'll see. Um, so those are currently out of my deck. Um, but we do still have rent. Um, and rent requires me to switch out the book I picked with something else under a specific set of rules. Um, so it still fits within the prompt uh, for that property. But I have to switch out the book. Um, there's also slide deals. Uh, which... Ooh, can I remember what a slide deal is? Let me check it. A slide deal switches out uh, any book or prompt that I pick for a free book of my choice. So I, most of the deals are actually really good for me. Um, forced deals mean I have to switch from a physical book to an audiobook, um, or vice versa. If I picked an audiobook for that prompt, I now have to switch it to a physical read. Um, but I could pick which one it applied to. I could pick what prompt to play it on. Um, and deal breakers take a prompt, a uh, property off the board, which means I may have further to go based on depending on how the deck falls to hit sets. So it, uh, the deal breaker takes a card off out of play, a property or a wild card property out of play. So they're the overall rules. <laughs> Um, there's also a secondary thing where I'm collecting money throughout the hand, like throughout the month, um, throughout the month's draws. Uh, and if I have more money at the end than I have books picked, like properties and wild cards, um, then I have to add more books on, um, which could get dangerous. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. That may be a rule I end up scrapping. We'll see how it plays out. But let's go. I don't know how to make a stable base to play this game, but uh, we're going to attempt this. It's going to be a bit shaky. I apologize, but we're going to work on it. All right, so I'll kind of explain as I go. Um, 
but this will start to make more and more sense. I mean, I will have mentioned it already, but, um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it already, but I will be playing two, one set. Um, so obviously normally you would play to three sets and that's some, whoever's first to get three sets wins. So I was going to play by myself. So we're going to one set. Um, and everything else that plays out today will influence how a book goes. So we're just going to be drawing from the top. Um, and I'll explain things as we go. So first off, we have Marylebone Station. And that is... Um, <laughs> let me just go check. And that is a new to me 2020... A new to me author with a 2020 release. So for our first property, we need to find a 2020 release from a new to me author. Um, and for that, I'm going to go with... Plain Bad Heroines by Emily Danforth. I really wanted to read this in December and I didn't get around to it. Uh, well, obviously. Um, oh, I'm running tight on battery. I might have to go charge up. Um, we'll see how long it lasts. But I, this is chunky. He, she's thick, but I really, really badly want to read her. So um, I'm going to try and prioritize her this month. Um, this is a dark academia sapphic story there's polyamory um so many good things i'm so excited to read it okay and our next card is whitechapel road and for our second property we had to pick a 2020 backlist sequel so for that i picked out knock three times by cressida cowl um technically i'm pretty sure this came out in 2019 so this was a 2020 backlist you feel uh, I bought it in 2020 but it was a backlist purchase yes um this is a middle grade and it's about witches and wizards um and they fight against each other it's great I love this series I can't wait to keep moving on with it all right and the next card is Leicester Square Leicester Square Leicester Square and that is a queer contemporary um our next property card got us a queer contemporary um i'm pretty sure this is technically a contemporary but it has some like um ghosty gentle vibes and that is watch over me by nina lacour um i don't know that much about this but i've read a lot from nina lacour before that i've really enjoyed especially um the one that's almost like a prequel to this i think it might have the same characters um we are okay um and I loved We Are Okay, so I can't wait to read Watch Over Me. And it's pretty small. It's like just over 200 pages, if I remember correctly. Or 260 pages. So it should go by pretty quick. Then we have The Electric Company. That is a sequel from my 2019 backlist. Then our next uh, property card got us a 2019 backlist sequel. And for that... I picked The Last of August by Brittany Cavallaro. This is the sequel to, um, what's the first book called? Um, A Study in Charlotte. Um, and this is a contemporary uh, series that's kind of murder mystery-ish. And it's following the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and Watson, if they were, like, actually to exist. So I'm excited to read this. It's been sitting on my shelf for a long time. And I've been really keen to pick it up. Next up, we have The Strand. Oh, this is getting a big TBR because, as I said, we go until we're done. The Strand is our next card. Um, and that is a historical fiction. Uh, red is other uh, for categories. So we had 2020 uh, release. Um, brown was a 2020 backlist. Yellow is contemporary. Um, the electric, uh, the um, light green, which is utilities is um 2019 backlist red is other um genre wise uh so romance historical mystery or thriller any other others and the strand is specifically historical um i know what i'm gonna read for that our next property got us a historical fiction and for that i'm going to be reading the lady's guide to celestial mechanics this is another one that was on my december tbr but i just went off the rails in december and didn't get anything done um this is a romance historical sapphic i'm so excited okay let's hope we start collecting a set soon oh we have some money so that goes across the top the money plays in later uh, i'll explain that 
Oh, we have another station, which is promising. So we have Liverpool Street Station. That is a queer 2020 release. Next up, we had a queer 2020 release. And for that, I'm picking The Ever Cruel Kingdom by Rinch Paker. I read The Never Tilting World not that long ago. And I want to follow on with this before I forget what happened in The Never Tilting World. Um, this is a direct sequel. I'm pretty sure it's just a duology too. So it will be done then. Um, and this features uh, a sapphic relationship as well as um, a non-sapphic relationship. But one of the main pairings is sapphic. I ran out of batteries, so I'm a bit... They too. So obviously, if I didn't make that clear, it, this is based loosely on Becca's Bookopoly. That's why it's Bookopoly deal. <laughs> um, I saw the name. I saw the name. All right, and our next card is more cash. So I can go straight up there. Then we have Piccadilly. Uh, that's a contemporary author of color. All right, so... Our next, uh, property, uh, required us to pick out a contemporary by an author of color. Um, and I kind of struggled with this a little bit. I wasn't sure what to do because, um, I had an idea straight off the bat, but then I realized I'd specifically designed this as author of color, not ethnically diverse. And the picks I had chosen were by, um, Latin American authors, um, Hispanic authors, but uh, a lot of Hispanic people don't consider themselves people of color, uh, especially if you're white, Latina, or Latino, or Latine. Um, so I, I kind of got stuck. But then I remembered that I have out this audiobook. It's called The Yield by Tara June Winch. Tara June Winch is an indigenous Australian author, um, and indigenous Australians are considered people of color, for sure. Um, and this is an exploration of uh, loss of culture, language, um, as a woman tries to reconnect her grandfather's legacy after he dies. I, it sounds beautiful. I have it out on hold already. I'm so excited to read it. Okay. And then our next one here is Fleet Street. Let's check our money up here. Okay, I just said Fleet Street. Fleet Street is a mystery or thriller. That's another other that I know exactly what I'm going to read for that too. Hopefully we don't get any rents because that could turn out terribly. Rent cards are meaning we're going to have to change what we picked out. And I don't want to do that. Um, next up, we needed to pick a mystery or thriller. And for that, I picked Night Swim by Megan Golden. Again, this is out from my library. Um, I don't read mystery thrillers all that often, but when I do, I tend to enjoy them. So I'm really excited about this one. And I believe it has a podcast element. So hey, hey. Oh, and we have another station. So we have Fenchurch Street Station. That is a 2020 new release with a pretty cover. Next up, we needed a 2020 new release with a pretty cover. And for that, I decided we would read Horrid by Katrina Leno. Um, this was kind of like floating on my high priority list and I knew I really, really wanted to read it. Um, it's a haunted house story. Um, I know the main character is a bit morally gray. She's a bit not likable, um, but I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm so excited to read this. I, I don't think I've read a single Katrina Leno book, but the vibes just feel right for me that I think I'm going to love all of them. And our next card is Trafalgar Square, which finally gets us a complete set. Trafalgar Square is a romance. And finally, we needed to pick a romance. And for this, I've decided to go with The Roommate by... Did I forget who The Roommate's by? I have this on my Kindle. <laughs> um, Rosie Dannon. Um, this is a romance. I think the guy works in the porn industry. I can't remember. But it looks so fun. I've got it on my Kindle. I'm so excited to read it. Um, and I think Rosie Dannon has a new release coming out in 2021 too. So uh, the next step here. We didn't get any rents this time. Which will probably actually be rare. Um, but so... Uh, these are all our properties. This is how many books we've picked out. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books picked out. 
So this can obviously vary dramatically from month to month, as you can see. The next step is to check out cash. So this is a fail safe, um, not even a fail safe. This is an extra challenge. The cash here, so I only got $3 this round, three Monopoly dollars, but this could get really pricey. Um, and the difference between the amount of money we bank and the amount of books we've selected, we have to pick more books. Um, so three, we're safe. We don't have to pick any more books, but it's, it's an extra challenge as we draw out of the cards and it could get pricey. So that's uh, the card draws. Um, and now we better go talk about how I'm going to fit all these books into uh, the Among Us Readathon. And I definitely have some bonus ones that I, um, some others that I need to read as well. So those are the picks from uh, book. Yopoli deal. Um, but I'm also participating in the Among Us Readathon this month. So I'm going to briefly talk about each of the prompts that I'm doing for that. I'm going to be an imposter um, and I'm trying to kill off everyone. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about how hopefully these ones will tie into, most of these tie into um, my Among Us Readathon TBR, but I've got a few extras. So let's just go through. So first off, um, you need to either swipe your card as an imposter, you need to either swipe your card or fix wiring. And I'm going to fix wiring, which is read a sequel. Um, so obviously we have to have a sequel in here already. So that's the last of August is going to be my sequel. Next up, um, imposters need to vent. Read a book that you think will surprise you. And for that, I'm going to read The Night Swim mystery thriller. It's going to have some twists and turns. I think it will surprise me. Um, book three is Blame Someone Else. Uh, read a book with a morally grey character. Horrid. Uh, for book four, unlock manifolds. Oh, this is to, for book four, I'm going to be trying to kill red. Um, and for that, I'll be unlocking manifolds, reading a book that features disability rep. For that, I'm going to read The Ever Cruel Kingdom. This features both mental health and physical disability problems. One of the love interests is missing a limb. Uh, and another love interest has major PTSD. Um, to kill purple. I'll be priming shields, reading a book with a weapon on the cover. And for that, I'm going to read The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. This is the first of our ones I hadn't talked about yet. Um, it's chunky. Look, she's she's got a sword. I promise it counts. Um, I'd also love to read the um, short snippets and scenes, Delia scenes that were released, which I think is called The Drowning Faith, and I'm hoping to read that as well. Um, I know this is chunky, but I just, I can't not put it on every TBR until I read it because I want to read it that bad. This is the sequ the final book in the Poppy War trilogy. Uh, high fan, um, high fantasy based in China and kind of loosely following the opium wars, but with shamanism and, um, magic stuff it's so good this series and i can't wait to finish it out all right and then for book seven which is to kill cyan i'll be uploading data um which is a book with the lgbt plus rep um for that i'll read lady's guide to celestial mechanics sapphic for book eight is i'll be killing brown and that's stabilizing stabilized steering something that's been on your tbr for a long time for that i'm going to be reading uh percy jackson and the titan's curse this is on my um uh, veteran TBR. I haven't actually had it for that long, but it's like been on my mental TBR for forever. I've never read them. Um, and this is the third Percy Jackson book. I feel like it needs no explanation. You know Percy Jackson. Uh, next up, we'll be killing Orange, and for that, we'll be starting The Reactor, a book with a romance. Uh, for that, I'll be reading You Had Me at Hola. Is that right? Yes, You Had Me at Hola. Um, by Alexis Daria. Uh, this is a romance featuring uh, Latinx characters, uh, and it looks so good. Uh, next up is To Kill Pink, Inspect Sample, uh, and that's something with an animal or person on the cover, and I'll read The Roommate by Rosie Jan for that one. To Kill Green, I'll be uploading data, which is something with Queer Rep, so I'll read Watch Over Me. Um, for book 12, which is to kill Lime, um, I'll be clearing Asteroids, which is to read a sci-fi. And for that, I'm going to read Remote Control by Nadia Korofor, which is her new release. I'm going to try and get this on audio. It's pretty short. 
Um, I don't know that much about the actual content of this, but I loved the Binti series. So I trust Nnedi Okorafor and I'm going to read it and love it. Then uh, To Kill White is To Chart Course, a book with a map. No Clear Times has a map. Um, then To Kill Yellow, we need to divert power, um, and that's a new to you author. Obviously, Plain Bad Heroines counts for that because we're counting it for the same thing in a Bookopoly deal. Then To Kill Black, we need something under 250 pages. And for that, I'm going to be reading The Emperor's Soul uh, from Arkham Unbounded. April and I are reading this together. We're going to be reading all of the things from Cosmere that we haven't read yet. and slowly catching up over the next couple of years. So Emperor's Soul is January's. Oh, I missed Navy, which is something with an animal or a person on the cover as well. And for that, I'm going to be reading The Book of Dragons. This is a um, collection of short stories from a bunch of uh, adult fantasy authors. Uh, there's some poetry in there, but I really wanted to read this for R.F. Kwong, Scott Lynch, Garth Nix. I'll probably just work on this slowly across the month. It's also out for my library, so I need to get it back. So good thing I'm fitting it on. But then because I'm extra, I haven't even talked about the few January releases I want to read. So I also want to read um, Across the Green Grass Field by Sean Maguire, which is the newest uh, Way with Children, which I don't think needs any explanation, but there it is. I think this is a horsey girl one and another entry point into the series. I also want to read Law by Alexandra Bracken, which is Greek mythology based. Obviously, this is very medusary. I don't know that much about the actual plot, but... It looks so good. A couple of other things I'm reading for other stuff. God, this TBR is like on and on and on. Um, we also have Australia Day by uh, Stan Grant, which is um, uh, an exploration of uh, race in Australia. And uh, this is uh, for Pages Book Club, which is the literally um, the library of the unread. Um, and I also just wanted to read it anyway and I had it out for my library regardless because Australia Day is in January, Invasion Day in January. Um, and I wanted to read this as like a counter celebration for <laughs> Invasion Day. Um, and then for the Buzzword Readathon Reading Challenge that Books and Lala is running, I really want to participate in that. So the uh, buzzword for January is Dream. So I'm hoping to listen to In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado is a collection of short stories. That's super weird. Um, and my friend Erin from uh, Sheba's and Shelves, I think is her username, um, said it was her favourite book of the year. So I'm so excited to read it. But also, uh, and once more, oh, sorry, Susie. Let's add something else on because I didn't draw anything from a particular section of my shelves, which is my 2019 new releases. Um, so I'm going to draw out two things from this jar. They're going to be my lowest priority, but I wanted to draw them out anyway because um, I want to try and hit all the sections of my shelf, if that makes sense. And we've hit every other section but this one, and I normally want to try and get two things read. So from this section every month. We're aiming to hit two from this section every month. So... Oh, the first one I've drawn out is, I don't even know if you can see it. I don't want to drop my jar, but it is Oh my god. It is Hello Girls um, by Brittany Cavallaro and I can't remember who else is <laughs> I'll go get it in a second. And the other one is this one. The Last True Poets of the Sea. Ooh, by um, Julia Drake. Julia Drake. Okay, I'm gonna go get those two and I'll bring them out. That's right. Um, Hello Girls is by Brittany Cavallar and Emily Henry. Um, this is a film and Louise retelling. Um, it's not too long, which is great. Actually, neither of these are super long. Um, I've had mixed things about it, but I'm still super excited to read it. We'll see how I feel. Um, and then The Last True Poets of the Sea is by Julia Drake. I knew I was close. <laughs> um, and this is a contemporary with a speculative twist about a girl who's grandfather or family were involved with a shipwreck and lost treasure but it's also dealing with mental health hard-hitting contemporary stuff i've been so excited about this for ages and i just kept 
like not getting picked up so these are the two from that jar they're my lowest priority for the month kind of thing but if we get to them we get to them and we'll see what happens get all this in the shot <laughs> i don't think i can i think the cat's sitting on one she is I, I, I don't think I can actually lift these into shot, but oh, there we go for half a second. <laughs> these are all the books that I'm going to try and get to in January. But anyway, there's tiers of priority. Oh, and there's audiobooks, which I, I'm not even in the stack. But um, there's tiers of priority. We'll see how it goes. Um, as an imposter, I don't have to kill. I have to kill. I don't have to kill everyone. I could drop two off and still win. The Among Us readers on also like I don't have to take it that seriously. Like if I don't get through everything, I don't get through anything. Everything. I'm not that stressed. But um, oh my god, look at me. But those are all the books that we're aiming for. Cry about it with me. <laughs> Hope you have a great day. Hope this is exciting. Hope you're enjoying the idea of Bookopoly deal. Let me know what you think. I'm going to tag Becca below because she's amazing um, and totally, uh, a, like, it's very much based on Bookopoly, at least in the name and the concept. Um, I also want to thank my mom because she put a lot of effort into helping me figure out how to make it all work. Um, and, yeah, that's... That's the video. Hopefully this wasn't too chaotic to edit um, and it all comes out all right. Hopefully you enjoy. And anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.